Roll one, two. Ten seconds. I'm Bruce A. Parr, and this is Frank J. Rich, and you're watching Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog. You know, then it comes back, and then I'll just say a couple more things and introduce you. In it. Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is brought to you by Chase Media Group, publisher of The Penny Saver and provider of multimedia marketing solutions for an omnichannel marketplace. And we uh, thank our CEO, Carla Chase, and my co-host, who also is the Chief Strategy Officer for Chase Media Group, for putting us up on the show every week. You can also see us on YouTube if you search for Townlink TV. And there's a lot of shows from the past uh, actually going on two and a half years now, uh, uh, with all kinds of different topics and guests. And Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is a community affairs program where we endeavor to bring you interesting people from the community and all of the communities uh, in this region, in the Lower Hudson Valley, uh, who are doing really interesting things and uh, contributing to the quality of life and that we think uh, you would want to know about if you don't already know about. And we're really happy to have on our show Liz Baldwin of Shumpike Dairy in Millbrook, right, in Dutchess County. Uh, and I know uh, Frank uh, has been uh, patronizing right, Shumpike Dairy now for a while, and that's how we learned about Liz. Uh, and, and Liz, uh, I know on your website, which is shumpikedairy.com, uh, the dairy's been in your, in your family for what, three, is it three generations? Or? Three generations, yeah. yes. Yep. So it goes back to your... Uh, yep, in the 30s, the farm was bought. It was in my husband's family. It's been in there since the 30s. We've been continuously milking cows since then. Uh, we conventional dairy until 2010 when I started the raw milk business. Oh, wow. Oh, so, that's been, uh, that, so it's only been since 2010 that the raw yes. milk... Yep, I became certified to sell raw milk and just, right. just sold the raw milk. Right. I think that's sort of how you found it, right, Frank? You were, were you looking for raw milk? Or, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, the quick story is that um, uh, I have a, um, a friend uh, who I work with in uh, business uh, areas for some years, and he just gave that up and, you know, went to the farm in Vermont and, and started uh, milking cows and producing raw milk and, and cheese. And um, we'd go up to visit him, and, yeah, there it was, you know, raw milk. Never heard of it, so to speak. And it was uh, delicious, and from that point on, I was always looking for some supply of it in the area. And that, it, it, so is that the only place you can buy raw milk? Is that a, like a dairy farm? Or? It, yeah. You can only buy, in New York State, you can only buy raw milk directly from the farm. So everybody that buys my milk has to come up to the farm to purchase it for themselves. And, and is it regulated that way? That yes. you can only buy, so, so it law. cannot be bought in retail stores, raw milk? Not no. in New York State. Right. And, and I know we were talking about that you go through a certification program, yes. right, with the... Uh, with the state and yes. what is that the agricultural department of the state that yep. regulates that New York or? State yeah. Ag and Markets yes I had to apply for the for the certificate they come and they inspect and they you know they have all kinds of construction requirements having you know milk there for 70 years it seemed a little odd that all of a sudden I needed yeah. to go through months of of you know changes but I did change things around just to accommodate a fewer number of cows right so um, and then they come in every month and they take a sample of the milk and test it to make sure there's no pathogens or things in it. Right. I mean, is that, uh, is that costly for you to do that? To, to, to that doesn't cost me anything. The reg I mean, to comply with the regulations, no. it's not something no. that really... Uh, you know, to get the certificate, the original, the, 
the first test cost me a little bit, but no. Right. No. And how many cows do you have in there? Right now I'm milking 22, and then I have another 10 or 15 young stock. We always raise all our calves and replace the herd with our own young stock. And again, in, in looking at your website, you do that uh, twice a day, right? You milk we them milk in the, the morning. milk the cows twice and, a day, yes. And what is it, 6 a.m.? and 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And 6 p.m., yeah. And so how many uh, people on the farm do you have doing that? I guess well, actually, your family does it, right? Originally, the reason I, I, the reason I, became, the reason I decided to do the raw milk really was because farming, dairy farming, it's such a labor-intensive job. And I was alone and, you know, had all, all the cows, so I had to hire help. Finding help to keep help, pay help, it was very difficult. Right. So I actually sold all of my cows. Oh. And then I wanted, you know, it's one of those things, once you become a farmer, you want to stay a farmer. Right. So I knew, I knew that people came to the farm all the time asking me if they could have the milk. And legally, I wasn't allowed to give it to them. But I just, I, I thought that this would be something that would really take off. And it was right. something that people would really want. And I figured I had nothing to lose if people didn't come for it. I, w I really wasn't any worse off. So I figured about five cows would be sufficient to, su to supply the, right. the need. Yeah. And um, so I went about getting the certificate and opened up my doors. Now I could advertise. Quickly found that five cows was not going to be enough mm -hmm. because the people came. Right. And, uh, but still, it was small enough. I had, I had halved the size of my herd, and I had halved the labor involved in, right. in taking care of the herd. And I had, I had uh, my website talks about stress-free cows. Mm -hmm. So all the sort of stress on myself was taken out of the whole thing, and it just became a lot of, it became a lot of fun, and it became doable. And so um, I got the whole thing established and lo and behold my son became interested so now I've passed That's it over right. to him right and uh, he's doing it we're milking this morning 22 cows wow. and by this afternoon we may not have any milk left you know we'll have to get the next milking in so so, so you're, you sell the same day uh, oh, yes. What you, uh, yes. yeah, so that's uh, as fresh as it gets isn't it's it as yes fresh <laughs> as it gets. I mean <laughs> frequently it, people come you know they I have the jars on the farm that you can buy when you get there or you bring your own container so you're you know, you fill it right there. I don't pre-fill anything. Right. But frequently, people will come. I'll say it's still warm. You know, your milk is five minutes old. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and how, like with refrigerated uh, raw milk, how long does it last compared to pasteurized? Well, I tell people a week. Right. I figure if people are going to come every week, they should take what they're going to get in a week. I've had right. people tell me that, you know, we went away and it was in the refrigerator for two weeks and it was still good. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, is that your experience? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 The other thing about raw milk is raw milk doesn't go bad. Raw milk sours, so you can continue to cook with it. You can, you know, right. you may not want to drink it if you don't like the sour taste, but right. it's perfectly good to, you know, continue to cook with. Great for bakers. Yeah. Turns into buttermilk. I mean, it becomes oh, okay. there yeah. becomes a time yeah. when you don't want it, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, store bought milk. It completely depends. They have. Uh, different pasteurization processes. They now ultra pasteurize milk it's, it, right. for extremely high heat for really short periods of time. And I think some of those shelf lives are like a month. That's kind of right. scary. And, and what about <laughs> the the, co you know, the retail cost? Let's say uh, to the customer uh, com comparison of raw milk to uh, store bought pasteurized milk. Well, I mean, dairying has been a, a you know trying to make a living on a conventional dairy has always been a problem because yeah. we can't regulate our price. Right. I can set any price I want. I've tried to make it reasonable at six dollars a gallon. <clears throat> I think at Cumberland Farms you might be able to buy it for three dollars a gallon, but you lost all the good stuff. Right. Oh, you're saying <laughs> regular milk uh, at yes. Cumberland Farms, yeah. And and if uh, on, on your website, if you bring your own container, it's 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 six dollars a gallon. You would buy the yeah. container. Okay, that would be uh, yeah. And if it's three dollars a half gallon. Okay, right. Yeah. And and then and how much milk do you get out of a cow a day? It completely depends on the stage of lactation of a cow. A cow in my herd could give anywhere from eight gallons a day to a gallon a day. Right. You know, the the sooner as soon as they've had a calf and then they start to give milk, they're gonna they're gonna peak and they could give up to eight gallons a day. And uh, it says here, like, well, there's a lot of things that we you know we saw uh, in terms of background on raw milk, and it seems there are some misconceptions, um, including as we were talking about uh, before the show that are promulgated by the Centers for Disease Control that, I guess, erroneously makes it sound like uh, raw milk can cause problems. And when 
you know, other research shows that it's, it's much, much less prone to create any health problems than a lot of other things that you eat, right? That a lot of, a lot of other dairy products. But just one of the factoids I, I found interesting is where it says during pasteurization, more than 50% of vitamin C is lost in, in milk, you know, things like that that I don't think people realize. Right, when they're drinking milk, <laughs> they're drinking processed milk, anyhow. I, th I think historically, um, the way milk was transported, you know, before the, we, there were good ways to refrigerate it, before there were easier ways to transport it, there were a lot of problems with milk. You know, it was, it was, it was not handled properly. Right. But today, you know, I put the milker on the cow, it goes directly into the, into the storage tank where it's right. immediately refrigerated. It's never exposed to the environment. There's very little chance of any kind of bad bacteria getting in it. Right. Once you take it out of there, if you heat it and kill all those enzymes that are all the things that are so good for you. Right. You know, and they're doing that in an, in an effort to kill the potentially bad bacteria. But the right. chances of that being in there anymore in the modern dairy is really it's very, low. very right. small. Right. Doesn't that go to the issue of uh, what you feed the cows or what's in the pasture? And, uh, and how that contributes to, um, you know, combating uh, bad well, bacteria. I, again, I, you know, I, um, I promote the stress-free cow. I think the environment, we're very calm. You know, the cows are handled very gently. And, you know, yeah, they're sitting out on a nice green grass with the sun shining on them all day long. They've got, you know, they've got the natural, what they naturally would eat, you know, which is grass. It's not a big high grain diet. Well, let, let, let's stop there for a moment because this is an interesting thing. You know, you, you can go into the supermarket and get uh, some cheese, which is called, I think, Happy Cow Cheese or oh, yeah. something like that. A laughing cow. A laughing cow. A laughing cow. cow. <laughs> laughing cow <laughs> and my, a laughing cow is a happy cow. Right? My, uh, the friend I referred to earlier is, um, is uh, a, a fellow who, who, on his website, says, uh, says continuously, a, uh, a healthy cow is a happy cow or Absolutely. a happy cow is a healthy cow. And um, uh, and there and he makes a big deal of the fact that the cow's uh, contentment level of contentment is a significant factor in in what they do and and the kind of uh, product that they deliver. So the milk from a cow that is under stress is not is it can be affected adversely. Is that sure, correct? Sure, absolutely. How, do you, how would you describe that? that? That's a. It seems a you know one of these sort of like <laughs> anecdotes as opposed to something that really <laughs> occurs. Well, you know, anytime we stress our bodies, we're more prone to any perfect. kind of disease. Yeah. Mm, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, anytime we're pushed beyond our limits, we're prone to more disease. But a, a happy cow is it, the market. The market require the market would make a, a dairy farmer want to produce as much milk as possible. Mm. In today's market, that's what the conventional dairyman needs to do. They need to make as much milk as possible. So we push every cow to its limits and beyond its limits. And in an effort to, uh, for the labor intensity, keep the cows inside. We don't want to have to move the cows back and forth and continue to bring them to where they get milk. Just leave everything confined. In those kinds of environment, you know, it can get dirty. You know, there can be, you know, diseases, you know, that way just, you know, without movement of air, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But in a in a smaller dairy on the family farm where more cable, especially now with the smaller numbers, let them go out, let, you know, I don't need to push them, I don't need to feed them. Production is not my goal, flavor is my goal. Mm, no, quality, yeah. And you'll find the, in France and different places where they make those really fancy cheeses, mm -hmm. it is exactly what is that grass, which yeah. kind of yeah. clover, you know, yeah. it really, yeah. the oh, exact really? feed. Yeah. Some of those things we can't even grow in this country. Right. Yeah. But just the fact that they're on grass as opposed to, you know, grain, manufactured food. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this fellow I was uh, referring to um, uh, also um, makes cheese. And it is important what the cow eats according to the kind of cheese that he's going to make. And uh, so that ma makes a difference. But that's yeah. great, uh, a great analog. This can change daily, you <coughs> yeah. know, the flavor. And in the winter, it's going to be different than the summer yeah. because oh, wow. in the winter time, I'm feeding hay, you know, dry hay that, you know, it's been produced on the farm. But it's still, it's a different. So it's a little bit like wine, it sounds and like. Then, <laughs> yeah. And the milk Absolutely. is then less yeah. creamy in the winter time than it is in the sometimes, summer. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. 
Sometimes, but not always, yeah. It just depends. You know, early spring, you go out. You know, sometimes, you know, they used to talk about onion-flavored milk because, you know, those onion grasses yes, yes, grow right, early yeah. in the spring. Oh, oh, and, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. And how many acres do you have, Liz? I have 188. Right. Has that always been the same throughout the generations, or has it changed yeah, over the no. years? The or? farm has always right. been 188. We right. rent about 100 acres of of other land to to do the hay and stuff. Okay, and that's just to um, feed the cows. Yeah, and, and there's been a, uh, I mean, a diminution of uh, the number of dairies. Right? It says, I think on your website, is it that it says it's like now only five dairy farms in? Well, that's it? the town of Washington. Yes. Oh, that's in just one town. But in yeah, Dutchess right. County, I th it's down to like 40. 45. And what is that? Is that the it's technology, the economy? Um, uh, Pretty much the economy. Yeah. It's it's a very tough, tough business to stay in, and it's so you know, it, the kids don't want to take over anymore. It's too it's too hard. There's nothing in it. There's no right. money involved. And 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 then uh, what else do you sell uh, at the dairy farm in addition to the raw milk? You sell other dairy products as well. Or? I don't because New York oh. State only allows me to sell the milk. Oh, that's it. That's, that's all it. they allow you to sell. Um, I, I don't make cheese. I could make cheese, right. but out of raw milk, I can only make 60-day aged cheddar cheese. Right. So I don't. Um, I mean, I could do other things, but it would require a whole different certification process. Right. I have, a, um, I have given a plot of land to a woman who does a garden. So we have vegetable, we have a vegetable stand there now. Oh, that's nice, yeah. So people can come and get vegetables. And I also sell eggs. Right. Which I, I don't have the chickens because I don't want the cross contamination. I think chickens have some weird things. But right. okay. <laughs> you know, you keep the chicken things where they are. But people, you know, eggs and milk just go together. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and how, how, I mean, this may sound like a funny question, but you know, it just occurs to me, uh, like with cows, for example, how, how much do they sleep during the day? Like how many hours are they awake? Oh, they're always asleep. Um, yeah, that's what I would think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you see a cow laying down in the field just chewing, chewing her cud, very happy cow. That's what she's content doing, and the more the more I see that all day long, the better. Oh, really? They're also creatures of habit, so you try to bring them in and put them out and milk them and do all, everything the same time of day. But when you see them chewing their, their cud, like you're saying, are they sleeping or are they awake? Yeah. It, it depends. Hard I, to I say. Think, <laughs> you know, they sleep with their eyes open. I, right. You know, they don't lay down. You know, they don't f sprawl out or anything. So. Right. Do they snore? That's, that's the question my wife would ask. <laughs> Do they snore? <laughs> you, you, oh, I used to. I don't you, anymore. You, this, that's, is, <laughs> this is what, r rationalization here? For <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For all I know, when I sleep, maybe I chew my cud. Uh, and that's possible, too. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I also thought it would be interesting for the audience to hear, uh, I mean, as I don't have to tell you, um, you know, how small school children love going to farms and seeing the cows milked and things I like that. I am and, and very fortunate to have a... A wonderful location. I'm right on Route 44 in the Shun Pike, which is, you know, it gets a lot of it gets a lot of traffic by right. it, and it, pretty much just by chance, when I went when I decided to do the raw milk, I needed to go out and get more cows. I had I still had some of my young ones left, but I um, came across a, a woman who had a herd of of her pets, but it was a mix of the breeds. So I have brown Swiss, I have a linebacker, I have Jerseys, I have Ashers and Holsteins. And um, so I always invite the public to come in. They watch the milking. They, you know, they see everything. And I'm, I can introduce all the different breeds of cows to them, which, whether or not it's important, I remember when I was in school that, yeah. you know, the different breeds. But I really didn't have an idea of what it really was. Right. But I've really become a. It's like a tourist attraction. Right. You know, yeah. it's a. It's a. And the cows, being as gentle and calm as they are. Little kids, I can let little kids come in and put the milkers That's on, and, and you know, they milked a cow, and oh, really? they get to drink the but milk. But isn't from also the cow. it's all done with machines now, right? I mean, it's oh not, yeah, but it's not. still you know you're right down there. You got to cl we clean the cow, you know, right. clean the cow's udder before you milk it, and then put the machine on. And right. Yeah, they yeah. love it. No, that's uh, it's that's extraordinary. Do do you know you you're making something of an educational uh, opportunity for right. for people at the same time, which is which is uh, great. Biggest highlight yeah. is when they get to feed the calves. They just uh, now is, yeah, it, yeah, do, yeah. do you get different milk from different cows? You mentioned you have different breeds of cows. Do you, does different. a linebacker deliver a different milk? Typically, than a, a Jersey cow will give more cream. Mm -hmm but less milk, a Holstein cow, which is why most American farms are Holstein now, because they're right. more volume. 
and the, like I said, the market wants volume. Uh -huh. So the Jersey, you see it, you know, other farm, it, it's more of a cream. Right. Uh -huh. So I have a blend. Yeah. But there is, I, I mean, if you go on my website, there is some talk about A1 milk and A2 milk, which is from different breeds of cows. Yeah. I have actually had people come in and ask me for milk from a specific cow. Yeah. They want the brown Swiss milk. I cow. see. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I'll, never, I'll never forget when I, I don't think this is unique, but when we were little kids and my older brother Robert were passing a farm, and of course, I think a lot of kids say, you know, does chocolate milk come from brown cows? You, know, you always <laughs> have that question. Like, is the sky blue? It does. Doesn't oh, it? Why, why is the sky blue? And does chocolate milk come from brown cows? It, it, it does, doesn't oh, it? Do, oh, well, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so is there a difference between raw milks? Uh, is, is raw milk raw milk, or uh, is there a difference? All milk that comes out of a cow is raw milk, mm -hmm. to start with. Right. Um, the product that you're drinking, I think, is going to completely depend on what the farmer's feeding the cow, how the farmer treats the cow. I think we can have a raw milk dairy on a, on a feedlot, you know, a three or 500 cow dairy that wants to sell raw milk, I think you're going to get a completely different product than you're going to get from, from yours. Yeah. I think a lot of people, the word organic means a lot to them, so they can go to the store and buy organic milk, which is not yeah, raw no, milk. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting how, and you know, Frank and I often talk about marketing and how words like that, um, that start off as really genuine and meaningful, become totally exploited and diluted, organic. I mean, another one, and this is totally unrelated in terms of the subject matter, but, it, but it's really um, analogous, is, you know, high definition, you know. <laughs> now now they, they put the word high definition, I don't mean TVs that really are, but they put on all kinds of other stuff that are not high definition, yeah. you know, but once the word gets into the uh, public consciousness, then there's going to be, you know, marketers who exploit it, and so it's interesting that you say, so you're saying if you see something that says organic, it doesn't really mean that it's organic, right? Oh, no. It, I'm sure it's organic, but it's not yeah. raw milk. Yeah. It, but I mean, but organic is used on other foods, isn't it, uh, now? I mean, I don't think it, I don't know how much that's regulated. Like, what does something have to, yeah. uh, what kind of, what, what um, you know, what parameters does a food have to meet, for example, to be called organic? I guess that's the question. Well, there, there are, yeah. there are right. definite... And yeah. that's really why I never went to organic, because for my purposes, it just doesn't make economic sense. Okay, right. You know, my practices are so close to organic anyway, and people call me all the time, and they'll say, is your milk organic? I'm not certified organic, Right. but it's me or the store. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And your pricing model is, um, is uh, not as accurate, actually, uh, in terms of the actual practice of people in the purchase of milk. Um, yes, Cumberland Farms, there are none around here, uh, might have milk very much less expensively, and even you can go to CVS and get fairly cheap milk. But, um, but for the most part, people, especially in this area, they're buying milk for $5 a half gallon. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. Or well, or I mean, there, there are places you get a three fifty. Like, um, I mean, like, I mean, that's one question I wanted to ask: is what, 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 what about almond milk? What do you think of things like almond milk? I mean, it's still well, pasteurized. I, the milk. reason yeah. that people are drinking almond milk, yeah. soy milk, all those things, yes. is because they're lactose intolerant. They can't digest the milk that they're buying in the right. stores, and they become lactose intolerant. You, I always tell these people, just try it because okay. the enzymes yeah, and all the things, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> either yeah. of you are lactose yeah. intolerant. Right. <laughs> but with all the natural enzymes and things in the milk, you can now digest the milk, so you shouldn't have to go to any right. of those other, they're all just processed foods. Mm. Well, it really is. That is amazing. You do, you do, you <laughs> that tastes the milk. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's certainly, it's not gray water. Uh, it's, it's, right. I mean, I, I drink it, so I'm familiar with it, but it's just amazing. Is this what they do it in La Leche League? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. the, you know, the, the it's other... Been a long time <laughs> since you have to deal with that, Bruce. <laughs> right. The other, um, the other interesting, um, again, sort of uh, debunking facts, I might call them, um, and, and you just mentioned uh, lactose intolerant, Liz, and according to this uh, information, it says 80% of people who were described as lactose intolerant by a healthcare practitioner can consume raw milk without a problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's the enzymes. And, and you mentioned before calcium. 
calcium absorption. Yes. And I always used to be confused about why people were being prescribed calcium, why people were told, you know, and I used to say, well, drink milk, drink milk. Right. Little did I know they're drinking the store-bought milk, that calcium is just going right through you. Right. You can't absorb it. You need the enzymes right. that are in the milk. And the fat. To help you right. to absorb. Oh, it's like a catalyst, like catalyzing. Yeah, it. well, yeah. fat to help you absorb uh, vitamins, right. nutrients. Right. And the fat in the milk is what holds the, the, you know, it's the powerhouse of all those vitamins, and right. it's not going to stick to your arteries and do all the cholesterol things. In right. fact, some people's cholesterol goes down. Oh, well, really? Drinking With raw, raw milk. milk. Really? Well, I could use that. I could use a little <laughs> cholesterol. Two things yeah. uh, I wanted to mention before yeah. uh, we lose time. Yeah. As one is. <clears throat> Um, uh, my experience with the milk. So when I, I'm a milk drinker and I have always been my entire life and, and I, I find that the amount of milk that I have historically um, consumed would contribute to mm. weight gain. Mm. Drinking this milk, which is creamier, h helps me maintain a, a lower weight profile. Really? Oh. Yeah, really? it does. I don't know exactly why, but I can see the difference immediately. Hmm. And all of the science in the world, and we have a lot of science here, um, I think uh, uh, fairly typically pales by comparison to the actual use model or the experience that you have. So tell us a little bit about what people say to you and what encourages you most about the use of your milk. It, it, uh, it, people have all kinds of health benefits, um, acne, allergies, asthma, um, acne, colitis, any kind of lactose intolerance to be able to drink now. Right. Um, just general feel better. Right. Um, and, you know, people come to the farm, they're so happy. <laughs> it right. makes me happy to be able to give it to them. Yeah. And so you find, like, with families, I mean, do you have a lot, a lot of young families who are Absolutely, your cousins? Absolutely, yes. And so the whole family drinks it, or is it just certain people in the family. You know, the kids will now drink milk. They never used to drink milk. Really? You know, now the kids love the milk. Yeah, it tastes good to them. Uh. Um, I've had women who um, want to make a formula for their babies and they want to use the raw milk, not regular milk, so they do that. Wow. Um, yeah, people want to raise their kids on it. And, and the other thing, again, you know, we, I know we've mentioned some of this already, uh, but I mean, I love dairy. I love eating cheese. I love all kinds sure. of dairy. I love eggs. and. And some of the, again, the information uh, on the uh, background data that we looked up is that it's saying when it comes to foodborne illnesses, dairy products are at the bottom of the list of offenders, only account for 1.3% of foodborne illnesses. And again, a lot of people, you know, the received wisdom, so to speak, uh, you know, is that, oh, dairy, uh, you know, you don't want to eat too much dairy. It has no nutritional value in the minds of many yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No nutritional yeah. value whatsoever. Right. And yet they also will talk about, you know, you, you, you always hear, like, uh, you know, uh, the French who eat a lot of you know, cheese and stuff, and then they tend to be fairly healthy stock, don't they? They, right? they, they tend <laughs> right. to be trim. Yes, right. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. movement now, you know, is, uh, people want local. People want to know where their food comes from. People want to go to the farm. They can see the cows. They can see the environment. They can see what they're getting. And right. it, they want natural, local. And what do you, uh, as we was, we do have to close it up. What are your hours, Liz, where people can come by at to Shum Pike Dairy? Basically you know? six to six. Is that seven days a week? Seven days, seven a, days week, a week. Seven days a week, right. So you have long days. I mean, obviously, you don't go to bed at six. We're pretty either, much so. always there. Describe right. your <laughs> cash register. Mm. My cash register is, you know, put the money in. It's an honor system. Oh, that, wow. Yeah, that's, that's refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. as refreshing as raw milk. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you go into the store, and, and there's the, the big tank where the milk is, and, and uh, there are jars, yeah. and you can right. take a jar, and then there's a list. You write your name and what you took, yeah. and uh, uh, a box, and there's money in it. And you leave your money, and you take your milk, and, and uh, you drive away. Yeah, that's and, right. And yeah. you might not see anyone. Right. Yeah, that's uh, nice. which is which is pretty amazing. Yeah. I mean, when I go up on on Saturday mornings, it's it's like that. Yeah. And almost okay. anybody right. that's ever right. been just for the first time right. will say, that another yeah. customer came along and told them what to do. That's great. Anyhow, uh, I'm sure we could milk this topic further, but um, and, and by the way, by the way, this really is delicious. The yes, milk. So I think is, maybe yeah. you have a, a convert. I know Frank has tried, and I might I might actually go full hog this time. So. Uh, <laughs> Liz, thanks. Liz Baldwin of Shunpike You're Dairy. Welcome. And it's shunpikedairy.com uh, in Millbrook in Dutchess County. Thanks so much. This is really interesting. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun as we finish drinking our milk. Thanks for watching. 
Frank Talks with Bruce DeBlog. And remember, when Bruce DeBlog listens, people talk and milk. Thank you. <laughs> um.